Hello lovelies and welcome to Sorel Bea Yoga. Today I recommend sitting up on top of a block or at least coming to a comfortable seat. And we're going to be doing a nourishing vinyasa flow that really focuses on immune boosting. But we're going to begin with some kapobati, which is a breath with an audible, forceful exhale through the lips and a passive inhale. So begin inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the lips, almost like a little whistling sound. You could follow in my lead. <laughs> Inhale. Hold the breath. Feel all the oxygen permeating throughout your body. And we're going to do another round. Exhale. Inhale. Here we go. <laughs> Breathe in. Hold the breath. And let it go. So Kapobhati gives the diaphragm a nice massage because the belly is forcefully engaged and actively pressing so it's like there's a little a little drummer in your belly and you feel like it almost jumping beneath your palms it's a wonderful way to wake up and calm anxiety start to rub the palms together and gently place them over your eyes and release the palms by your sides let's begin so moving the block out from underneath you we're going to lay on down come all the way onto your backs comfortable here, settling in, feeling your spine resting against the mat. Start to bend the knees and plant the feet down. And then take the right ankle and cross it over the left thigh. Noticing your spine, your tailbone here, try to roll it so more of it is on the mat. And then take your right hand and press that right leg away. Stay like this. And then start to reach the hands up overhead and do five crunches, drawing the hands up towards the legs. And when you're done with that fifth round, hold up in that crunch, really squeezing the abdominal muscles. And after that final crunch, let the arms come down like a cacti. And keeping the legs just how they are, start to lower them over to the left. If this feels really uncomfortable in the hips or the legs, just bring the knees stacked on top of each other for a spinal twist. Just passing through. We're gonna end up coming back up and finding a restorative pigeon. So taking your hands or even a strap or a towel to the back of the left thigh. So you're threading the right hand in between the legs and the left hand reaches around. Staying here for as long as you'd like. And just breathing. And then yogi's choice. Stay just like this in this restorative pigeon, which is one of my absolute favorites, especially if you have tight hips or any lower back pain. Or start to extend the left leg out long. And then begin to cradle the right leg, rocking it like a little baby, before opening it up into a half happy baby. And I know this is a wild pose. <laughs> Good. Once you're done trying that out, we're going to switch sides. So plant the feet down, crossing the left ankle over the right thigh. Press the left leg away as you roll the tailbone onto the mat. And then start to move into your five crunches. So reaching the hands up overhead and crunching up. Really engage the abdominal muscles. And when you finish with that last round, hold it up, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then letting the arms come into our cacti arms, start to just drop the legs over to the right. Once again, keeping the legs just how they are. If it's too much in the hips or the lower back, just bring the knees stacked on top of each other for our OG spinal twist. And then we're going to meet back up in our restorative pigeon. 
So keeping the legs the same, just catching the back of the right thigh as you lift the legs up. Bringing the shoulders down. So notice if the shoulders are lifting a lot, walk the hands lower on that leg or once again, maybe grab a strap or a towel, something to help give some extension in the hands. That way you don't strain the shoulders. And then Yogi's Choice, stay like this or begin to extend the right leg out long as you start to cradle your left leg like a little baby and just kind of rock it, opening and closing that hip. Before moving into a half happy baby. Once you're done with that, start to rock and roll a few times, have a little fun with it. Get some momentum before it carries you all the way up and into your tabletop. And then sitting back on the heels, take a few wrist circles here. And from here, make your way back into that tabletop and start to move through some cat cows. So inhaling lifts the heart, exhale round the spine. Inhale, lift the tailbone, exhale round. And just taking some organic movement here, maybe flipping the wrists so your fingers are pointing towards the thighs, getting a little groovy with it, a little freaky with it before taking your downward facing dog. And once you make it to your downward facing dog, take your dog for a nice walk, pedaling the legs, and then moving to your high plank and lowering the knees down. And we're gonna take five little chaturanga push-ups here. I mean three, my bad. You can do five if you want. Once you're done with that, plant the palms, press back up to your downward facing dog and crawl your feet to the front of your mat. Inhale, rising all the way up, reach the hands up. And we're gonna take a side bend here over to the right and then to the left. Okay, bring some mobility into the spine and then reaching the hands back up and forward fold with your exhale. Halfway lift, exhale, fold, plant the palms, step right leg back, then left leg. Inhale, come forward through that high plank, lower the knees down, chest down, chin down. Slither up, upward facing dog or baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hanging out here for a few breaths, spreading the palms, rolling the biceps out. And then stepping forward, forward fold, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold, inhale, rising up and taking side bends, starting to the right, then to the left and forward folds. Stepping back, first left leg, then right leg, high plank, knees, chest, chin, inhale, lifting up baby cobra, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Feel the sit bones lifting up. Feel the navel pulling up towards the spine. And then gently lowering the knees down. Inhale, sweeping left arm up and threading the needle. So you're gonna come onto your left cheek, left shoulder, and use your right fingertips to open your heart a little more. And then we're gonna get a little extra groovy with it. Send that right leg out to the right. Inhale, rising up, so you're using that back foot as a little kickstand. And then crawl your right hand down the right leg. Left arm sweeps up, so you're in this beautiful side body stretch. And then cartwheel the left hand down, right arm sweeps up. Maybe even the right leg floats up for a variation of side plank and possibly taking three crunches here, elbow to knee. You don't have to though, these are just options. Cartwheel the hands forward to sweep that right leg up, knee to nose. Inhale, lift. And then take some little circles here with the hip. Good, and then step that leg in between your hands, finding your low lunge, Anjani Asana. Noticing the spine, tuck the tailbone here so you're sending your hips down. Rib cage pulls up and down. I mean, up and back. Cartwheel the hands down and then bring that right forearm to the right thigh. 
Swivel the back leg so it's parallel to the front of your mat, taking a variation of side angle. Then left hand is going to swivel all the way to the back of your mat. Right arm sweeps up, finding a variation of side plank. From here, facing the back of your mat, hands come down tabletop. Same side again, so doing a little mandala, left arm sweeps up. Thread the needle coming onto your left cheek, left shoulder. Right leg kicks out. Same thing we did, inhale, reach the hands up, crawl right fingertips down that leg for a variation of Gates pose. Then left arm comes down, side plank, those three crunches if you'd like, or just hold this variation of side plank. Crawl the hands back forward, inhale, right leg sweeps up, three-legged table, knee to nose. And maybe taking some little circles here in the hip before stepping right foot in between your hands. Inhale, reach up, low lunge, Anjane Asana. Really focusing in here on the core, doing a nice tuck of the tailbone, sending that left hip down. Cartwheel your hands down, right forearm to thigh, left arm sweeps up. Same thing, same variation of that side angle. Then cartwheeling left hand down to the back to the front of the mat, finding a variation of side plank before pivoting completely to face the front of your mat again, tabletop, and then a lovely child pose. Reconnecting with your breath here if you lost it. Maybe getting some wiggles or holding a static hold. Inhale, tabletop. Sweeping right arm up. Exhale, thread the needle coming onto your right cheek, right shoulder. Left leg kicks out to the left, rise on up, and left arm crawls down left leg for your side ang or your gates pose variation. Then right arm plants all the way off your mat to the right, finding that side plank and maybe those three crunches. Hands come down to the front of your mat, left leg sweeps up, knee to nose. Step left leg in between your hands, low lunge. Left forearm to thigh, right arm sweeps up as you pivot that back leg, finding a variation of side angle. Right arm cartwheels to the back of your mat, left arm lifts, variation of side plank. Facing the back of your mat, tabletop, and repeating. Inhale, right arm lifts up, thread the needle. Left leg kicks out, rise on up, gates pose. Right arm cartwheels down, left arm up, left leg up. Three crunches in your side plank if you'd like, or just hold. Hands crawl to the back of your mat, three-legged table, knee to nose. Step left leg in between your hands, low lunge, Anjane Asana. Exhale, left forearm to thigh, right arm sweeps up, gates side angle. Then cartwheel right hand down, left arm up as you straighten that left leg for variation of side plank. Both of your hands cartwheel down, back at the front of your mat. Pressing the hips back, child's pose. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or hop to the front of your mat. Forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, Tadasana. If you'd like to take that again, pausing the video and running through it again. If you got a little confused, I get it. I moved kind of fast there. But it's a lot of repetition and a lot of fluidity in the body. And if you mess up, that's okay. Go with it. From here, we're going to face the side of our mat the long ways and take a big step with the right foot out so you're in a goddess shape. Toes out, heels in. Hands to thighs and just kind of rock side to side. Inhale, reach the arms up, straighten your legs. Grab your block if you have it and bring it into the right hand. If you don't have a block, that's okay. Pivot the right toes to face the back of your mat while the left toes still face forward. Reaching the right hand and your block to the inside or the outside of the right foot. Left hand comes to your hip or reaches up, finding your triangle pose, Trikonasana. Option to stay like this or maybe take a bind with that left hand to the back, to your lower back. Inhale, rise up. 
reach up, take hands to hips. We're gonna pivot so back toes face forward as well. Hips are square, finding your pyramid shape. Reaching forward and then folding. And use your hands here to get a little bit of body awareness, noticing where that right hip is in space. Drawing it back as you press through the left heel, drawing the left hip forward. Kind of tricky, I know, two opposite movements happening. Then planting the palms, step that left foot further back, lower the knee, inhale, reach up, low lunge, Anjane Asana. Exhale, cartwheel your hands down. We're gonna swivel into our Skandasana, so bending into our right knee, lifting left toes up, and then shimmy it all the way to the front of the mat, bending into the left knee, right toes up, Skandasana. Cartwheel hands down, back knee lowers, inhale, reach arms up, low lunge. Cartwheel your hands down, pyramid shape, so bump that back foot up a little bit, grabbing your block if you used on the other side. Notice the hips here, keeping them as square as possible. So there's a lot of awareness to the lower back and the hips. Breathing. Moving into our triangle pose on the opposite side, taking that block to the inside or the outside of your left foot. Pivot right toes to face away. And then right hand comes to the hip or reaches up. So now the hips are open versus in pyramid, they were closed. In triangle, the bottom ribs press forward, top ribs press back. Inhale, rise up. Point toes out, heels in, find that triangle pose, then your goddess shape. Straighten the arms, straighten the legs, five-pointed star, hop to the front of your mat, give a little wiggle, cause you did it. And that was our moon salutation, a little circular flow. And here we go, a little bit more. We're gonna step wide again. Finding a warrior two facing the front of your mat. So you're bending into the left knee, pressing into that back edge of the back foot. Arms are nice and wide, rolling the shoulders down and back. And we're just gonna pivot, keep the arms where they're at, straighten both legs, and then find warrior two facing the back of your mat. Really drawing that front knee towards the pinky toes rather than letting it cave in. And then straighten both legs, pivot warrior two facing the front of the mat again. Take your left hand to your heart as right arm reaches up and over for a variation of side angle. Then right hand heart as left arm sweeps up for a variation of reverse triangles. You straighten that front leg. Moving between these two shapes one more time. So side angle, then reverse triangle, then side angle, but grabbing your block if you'd like it. Bring it to the outside of that front foot. Bending deeply into that front knee as your right hand reaches up and overhead, if it feels okay in the shoulder. Think of opening the heart here. Take your block with you, rise all the way up. We're gonna pivot to the back of the mat. Place it down to the outside of the foot. Find your warrior two. And then moving between our reverse triangle and our side angle, starting with the left hand at your heart, reverse your triangle, straighten that front leg. Bend back into the front knee, right hand to heart as left arm reaches up and over, side angle. Then reverse your triangle again. Then side angle. Reverse your triangle. Then side angle, and this time placing your hand on the block. Bending deeply into that front knee, but still keep the back leg just as activated, pressing through the outer edge of the back foot. Rolling the bottom ribs forward, top ribs back. Left arm is reaching up overhead with a lot of length in your arm. Inhale, bring your block with you, rise all the way up, straighten your legs. Point your toes and heels out. Lower the block down, reach your arms out and rise up. Start to fold halfway, then come back up. Fold halfway, pressing through the heels, then come back up. And then fold all the way, maybe placing your hands on the block or just placing them on the earth. 
and play with it here. You can even catch opposite shins, drawing your torso in between the legs as you rock the weight a little bit more into your toes. Maybe you like to move and you're bending into the knees, shaking your head, feeling this beautiful, yummy stretch in the lower back, letting all the blood rush to your head. Crawl the fingertips forward, halfway lift, and then crawl your fingertips all the way to the front of your mat. Step forward, forward fold. Widen your feet as wide as your mat. And take any variation of a rag doll here so you can catch opposite elbows and sway. And then step back to your downward facing dog. Option to take a flow here or just stay in your downward facing dog. Your choice. Listen to your breath and your body. This is your practice. Meeting back in our downward facing dog. Reconnecting with your breath if you lost it. Feeling the warmth in the body, the warmth in the heart. And gently set your knees down, swivel the legs around and come all the way onto your seat. From here, send the left leg out long. Cross the right ankle over the left thigh so you have figure four legs. Stay like this or start to bend in the left knee, crawling the left foot closer to your bum or torso closer to, to that, uh, bum closer to that foot. I cannot talk. <laughs> and pressing into the back fingertips, lift the heart. So notice the lower part of your back here. If it's rounding a lot, if you're getting a little bit of like a hunchback shape here, crawl the legs forward. Beautiful, and switching sides, extend the legs out long, crossing left ankle over right thigh. And then same thing on this side, playing with how close you want your bum towards your foot. And you can play with pressing that left knee away from you, but really listen to what the body needs here. Remember, this is a nourishing flow, listen to it, allow it to tell you what it needs, what it wants without any judgment. Just a lot of love here. This is a place of love. Finding the breath, try to stay up on the fingertips rather than pressing the palms down. So the core is really strong here, holding you up. And then extend both legs out, give them a little shake. Finding your butterfly legs here, bringing the feet together and your choice close to the groin or far away. And start to find some little flutters before forward folding over the feet, allowing the spine to naturally round. Breathing into the back body. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale, slowly come all the way onto your backs. And your choice of any inversion here, maybe a happy baby or just legs up or if you have a wall nearby, legs up the wall. If shoulder stand or headstand is part of your practice, please take what you need. Maybe even just sliding the block underneath the tailbone for a restorative variation. Anything with the feet above the heart. Tapping into that Leela, that divine play, just having fun here. Being curious. Letting the body either stay in stillness or move around. One of the biggest purposes of yoga is finding more presence within yourself. From here, moving into either a bridge shape or a will shape. If you're on your block, just stay there and plant the feet down, knees up. If not, gently roll the spine back out and move into either bridge or will. Taking your time, maybe lifting one leg and the other making sure you can breathe. When you're ready, moving into your spinal twists, 
any variation of a spinal twist. And just remembering that through yoga, a lot of things that we bury start to come up. Maybe things we don't like about ourselves or things we aren't proud of. But the beauty of yoga is that we learn to accept and love ourselves and others just the way they are. And things that we aren't happy with, we learn the tools to grow and change and be better and kinder and more loving people. As cheesy as that is. <laughs> when you're ready, moving into your final resting shape. Taking some breaths here. And this is where I leave you, my dears. Stay as long as you'd like. And I hope to see you next week. I'm so grateful for you all. Namaste.